Blog Talk Radio. Closer to uh, you know, a whole little big thing that's coming up what, on the fourth or the third in November. What's Thank you. 
That a rapper is becoming some sort of a social politician on things who said one thing or another, and now they're just like out there doing, uh, you know, now they want to, they, they, they know what's best for uh, black folks, you know, because of their wealth status. I don't, I don't like that. Right. So, um, you know, this is unscripted. So one of our listeners said that they couldn't hear. I think it's the guest that we have that's about to come on, mm-hmm. um, Miss uh, Courtney Harvey. And actually, we're going to go ahead and bring her on because maybe she has some thoughts about this as oh, well. Yeah. Um, so we're going to bring Miss Courtney Harvey on, who is actually an author. Um, and we're discussing. Hi, hi, um, how you doing, madam? Miss Courtney. Hey, how you doing? Oh, fine, right. fine. So we were uh, wanted to bring you in on our discussion before we start to talk about your book, your new book that you have out okay. called Cola. Um, so have you heard anything about the whole Ice Cube situation and people being upset with him with meeting meeting with Trump? No, ma'am, I have not. Okay, you haven't heard about. It. Okay, so yeah, from. From his live, he basically was saying that, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't go to them, they came to him, you know, or whatever. Uh-huh. And that, you know, he, I guess he, basically he does, they they don't want to vote for Biden, but I can't see us dealing with another four years of Trump. I just can't, that's my opinion. And for people who have been through what we've been through for the last four yeah, years, yeah, right. And, and, and then the, the Brianna thing, the Brianna Taylor, well, they didn't even, Add her in with um they didn't even bring her situation to um the Supreme Court. So it's just it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Yes, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on, Miss Courtney. <laughs> yeah, well I can say I'm a big fan of ice cream and uh boo goes to him for taking up for himself. Yeah, that okay. is true. Yeah, for him to, to say, you know, what it is that what's going on to defend himself. A lot of people are coming to his defense as well, you know, which is, which is, you know, mm-hmm. definitely a good thing. But I just thought like I said, uh, um, when it comes to politics, I don't think I should be like, we should really hear from people who, who are rappers who rap about one thing. And then now they turn another leaf because they got this amount of money. Yeah, because he's doing damage control. I'm sorry. I know. I understand Miss Courtney that you a fan, but you have to admit it was NWA and all them that came out with the whole gangster stuff with calling women out their name, all that craziness started with them. Uh. <laughs> oh, silence, Miss Courtney. <laughs> but it did. But it did. Well, you know, I just, I'm just really too big into politics, but I think that's just the stuff he rap about because I'm a big fan. If he he had a wife for so many years, and I'm sure he loved her, and he got kids. You know, when I listen to rappers rap, I just think they're just you no know, rapping because my book got a whole lot of dope words in it and a whole lot of curse words, but you know, it's just not me. It's just my way of explaining and expressing my book about the things that I do. Right. And you're calling from what what um you're calling from um where are you calling from, Mississippi? Yes, I'm from Charleston, Mississippi. We real small down here, but we get it popping. <laughs> they get some popping. So you can relate to um the whole rap thing because of uh, so your book deals with the streets then, right? This cola right. This book cola yeah. she deals with the street life. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it turns to that. She's not she's not from the street, but she has she has a very, very, very big crush on a street hustler named Dice. Okay. Okay. So, give us be, before we get into the book, your book synopsis. Give us a little bit of information about you. Tell us who you are. You know, and, and, so we can get to know our listeners can get to know about you a little bit. Where did your love for writing okay, come well, from? Okay, my name is Courtney Shaky Cashel Harvey. I got married to Rico Harvey at the age of twenty-two, and we're still married. And 
My favorite color is pink. My birthday is March the 16th, and I'm a very lovable person, but I also don't like to play. Okay, okay, okay. So where did Nyla Cola Armstrong come from? How did you even uh, come up with this character? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well... The re- I'm not too crazy about the real name, and once people read the book, they'll realize that I'm I'm crazy about them two being called Cola and Dice. And the names came about because we know every street nigga love a cola shaped pretty girl. She got to be pretty. She got to be smart. And Dice came about because my husband he's a very big big gambler, and he loved playing shooting dice. So. I put those two names together to make up Cola and Dice. And I feel like those two names are dope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So from what I'm reading from the synopsis, it looks like um, Cola, she grew up in a pretty messed up childhood with an alcoholic and abusive mother, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she um, she ends up, falling in love or, or getting a crush on this young street hustler and she catches his attention, he decides he's going to make her his wifey? Exactly. And that's the biggest, biggest part of the book about Cola and Dice and her ready to leave home from her mom who's abusive, like you said. And she has this one best friend named Aisha and she's very, 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 very close to Aisha's mom. But only people just know really what's going on behind those four walls is Aisha, which is her friend. But she, uh, her credit on Vice is so big that when she sees him with other men, I mean, other women, she gets upset because he, I mean, honestly, he's a dog, he's a dog nigga. He really, really, really has his way, but he never made a woman his wife. And all of a sudden, they're going to go to a party and you got to read it to find out, but she's going to get his heart. But the whole book is about love. Someone can love you so deep that it makes other people hate, and not and money or power can save you. Mm, that's deep. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious because I know sometimes, uh, Mr. Stout, you call me your radio wifey. So this wifey thing, explain, break down this wifey thing from a man's point of view. That's what I'm trying to understand right yeah, here. Yeah, well, you got what it is like <laughs> You guys are the queen. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, but what one. is the so the wifey is, is the person that you're kicking it with, but you they they your number one? Is that what they, a wifey I mean, is like the I number one? It was more like that was like your your real wifey was just like a, a like a, a a way of just saying it like in a, in a yeah like a pet name of saying that's that's your wife, you know. But it's just like wifey. Yeah, well, see, basically what wifey and queen mean in this book, I'm going to break it down real, real good. Okay. Some okay. guys be in the street selling dope or whatever, and they out here coding all these different women. You know, they got women throwing themselves at them fucking, you know, can I say that? These yeah. women in the world that will actually suck dope guys and have sex with them just because of who they are. But in this book, everybody's going to find out that Dice is not that kind of man that holds this woman down. Actually, his woman is going to be his right-hand man. That's, that's his respect. She's going to give respect in the streets more than anybody, his boys, the gang, family, everybody. She, his wife and his queen, and she will not be disrespected. No way possible. And that love that he has for her is going to draw so many enemies. And then he's a street guy, so, of course, he's doing things in the street that also bring enemies. But deep down in the book, the enemy is going to come with a deadly attempt for Polar because of love that someone has for Dice that he doesn't even know. That almost sounds like some power type stuff. Yeah, right? well, yeah. <laughs> cookie, what cookie came to mind. Yeah, when I when I heard that. Oh, uh, cookie, I, cookie came to mind. Yeah, that's what she's from. From uh, like Empire. Yeah, from Empire. Okay, okay. It's gonna be really, so really, I was really deep. Cole is his queen, and he the king, and he he was sick for me. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it's pretty like, a deep, uh, you know, a, a book right here. So no, is it more like a um, like a thriller or like you know like what what type of book would you say what it would would be like you know in uh, when when you it's, look for it on the film? It's street lit. It's, it's street lit drama. 
um, all kind of, it's just basically street lit. I'm a very big fan of Wahida Clark, Ashley Antoinette, Carl Weber, mm-hmm. people like that. My books fall in the very category. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you like, so you're, um, you enjoy the 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 street life type, because that is a lot of people's reality. You know, a lot of people yeah. um, live the street life. They are. We we got people living the street life on a daily basis. You know, that's why they love power so much because it's street right. life. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's why they love empire so much right. because it was street life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A mixture of street life and entertainment with with empire. Right. But straight street life gangster. You know that. 50 uh-huh. cent type lifestyle yeah. that he was um, glorifying and rapping about and all that kind of stuff. So that's deep, you know, and you're right. Yeah, a lot of times. Exactly and uh, Cola is more of the basic of her and Dice leading up. Now, I'm in the process of writing part two, but I'm not allowed to say what's the name of it and stuff until everything goes through. But right. it, I can say it's more about war than it is about love because, you know, if you read the book, you'll tell at the end that something very, very, very tragic happened, and everybody that knows guys and reads the book will know he's not going to play any games in part two. I can't say that it is. It is it wow. got more drama than love. I mean, more, yeah, more drama and war than love. So, so for the people who have been reading your book, what what type of responses have you been getting? Oh, my God, my Facebook page is popping. I have a lot of people that write what they want to write on my wall. I have messages. I I sell sell them everywhere. I I go everywhere and sell them. I have business cards. They're selling me stuff like, it's good. They're ready for part two. What's going to happen? They tell me I'm marvelous. I mean, I feel like a mini celebrity in my hometown. Oh, yeah. So, what yeah, do you they, think was the most? Really, really what was the most challenging part? Do you feel of writing your book? Oh my God, Miss Patricia, I said fuck this shit so many times. I, I mean, I wrote this book. Okay, let me let me let me start off. It took me two years to finish this book. It wasn't supposed to take that long. When I first started on this book, I was pregnant with triplets, you know. And I was just on on bed rest at home. I was just bored and not having nothing to do. So I just started writing on pen and paper, which is why my name pen by Shake It for my business. But and like a little bit like a few months later I ended up finding out that I the babies did not make it and that discouraged oh. me so, 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 so bad oh. that I just was like you know, just fuck it. I just like fuck it. And my husband and mom, those are the ma- and, and well, God, my husband and my mom, those are the main three people that kept me sane. Like I literally lost myself, but I kept myself up that nobody knew. But I, I literally lost myself, and I made a promise to my babies that I was gonna finish that cola book. So I ended up finishing it last year. And I got it published this year. Now, I okay. say that to say this, I'm in competition with my own self because it took so long for part one to come out that I'm almost done with um, part two. It'll be, I say at least the beginning of November, the book will be through. And I'm very proud of myself because I felt like the oh. only person I should be in competition with is myself. So I was like, yeah. you know what? Girl, you finished this book two years ago last time. You need to finish this one faster. So I did it. Right. I mean, that's, that's awesome work right there. And and now, have you been thinking about, like, making, like, a, a, a film or a short film or submitting it for a, a film or a TV series? For sure, for sure, they for sure. I um see Miss Patricia make made a movie and congratulations on that. And oh, thank um, you very much, man. I, I'm gonna <laughs> take this further than just writing it. My goal is to really, really be famous. I wanna be famous and rich. If I don't be famous and rich, I wanna make sure a whole lot of people know me and know my work. That's my main goal. Right. Yeah. So your most challenging part is it was getting through um, what you went through with the loss of your babies and, and, and things of that nature. And I'm so sorry to hear that. 
But the actual, so I want to get into the actual writing of the book. So what was the most challenging part for you in the when when you were creating the characters? Keeping the puzzle together and making sure the book is good and making sure people can feel the pain and make sure that they, I mean, it just was a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I can't just really explain, but I can say what helped me was writing down, you know, names of a chapter that I was making, maybe thinking of, and then I'll go and write, you know, just little skits and then keep going back, adding stuff like what they had on or what they're feeling. My main thing was to make sure that I feel like I had problems with making sure people can feel each character, but you know, mm-hmm. just seeing how crazy they is about it, I did a damn good job. Yeah. So as far as truth, you have a lot I, of I people. Y'all, I probably can't even be cussing on Y'all, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we just gonna put you uh, put you in, in the um um PG thirteen area. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm <laughs> You talking about a dog yeah. stuff anyway? Yeah, I never had so, a damn group of folks. So how what so if you were to be able to give an author <laughs> advice, how much what would you say the importance of proofreading and having someone proofread your stuff um, would be? Like what advice would you give them in that area? Okay, with Cola, I actually did all the proof reading myself, and I would say, even though people say it's a good book, I wish I had got somebody to go back through and edit because most. You know, famous writers do have an editor, so I can say part two will have an editor. That's a good thing to have an editor, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um, with each book, as you as you write, this is what I've noticed for myself growth, too. Though. You grow, yeah, yeah you grow, and your characters grow. That's the cool thing about mm-hmm. writing a series. Yeah. Is because the the readers will be able to follow the growth of you as an author, as you of you as a writer, and also the characters. Especially right. if you plan on making this more than just two books. You know what I'm saying? If yeah, you plan exactly. on really making this a series, mm-hmm. you know, next generation, you know, generation after that, whatever, because a lot of people do that with their books. They, it's, right. it's a series. So the cool thing is Cola is the beginning. And, and let me commend you on that cover. That cover is mm-hmm. everything. Like, I love that cover. Yeah. Very, um, very nice cover. Um but it's, it's, it's I was cool very picky to allow... get it too, Miss Patricia. Huh? I said I was very picky when they was sending me pictures of models and stuff. I was very, very, very picky. I let them know that y'all ain't just going to put anything on my book cover. I wanted a girl yeah. to match the lady that I'm describing in the book. And, and, right. and very nice cover. Very drawing. Um, very, very nice. So as you Mm -hmm. continue to write your series, you're going to get better and better, and your followers are going to recognize that. I think with my first book, I definitely grew as a writer. Like, Mm -hmm. my first book had a lot of myself in it, but then it was some fictional stuff. But I noticed that with each book in the series that I wrote, it was like I was getting better and better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was was less of me, less of my life, and more of the characters you know, who the character was. So they're going to be able to follow you. They're going to be able to follow um, Cola and Dice, mm-hmm. and and they're going to grow with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and their yeah. chemistry is really deep because they, it's not about me and my husband, but a lot of the similarities uh, between Dice and Cola is based on my love that me and my husband share, like them holding hands and them being by each other's mm-hmm. side and all that kind of stuff. And him being a street guy and her being a smart, you know, beautiful, educated girl, a lot of that came from my mind and how my husband loved me, how I love him, how we touch. And, you know, just just basically just their bond is going to be unimaginable in the book. And folks love Cola. They're, they are very upset with me. <laughs> I have a lot of people upset about the ending, but I have to let them know that that's how my book going to sell. That's how part, part two going to sell. I have to leave you on a cliffhanger. Right, right, right. right. You know what? Yeah, and I, 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 
Yeah, I um I, I think it's beautiful that you wrote about the love of a couple and it's a beautiful thing that you and your husband are very affectionate. It sounds like y'all are very affectionate. And and, and, and a lot yeah. of people just don't even know how beautiful it is to be able to hold your mate pen and, and, and that affection. Mm-hmm. A lot of relationships, believe it or not, are lacking affection. They don't know how to be affectionate. They don't know how to communicate. They don't they don't know that love language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's yeah. beautiful that you were able to bring that out in your book to show the love between these two people who may have normally not even fallen in love. They for two I'm guessing two different worlds. You know, she's dealing mm-hmm. with life and then he's in the streets. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, like he had like a, a, a double secret life. So that's a part right there. Life. Yeah, double right. secret life. So yeah. he's out there yeah. He got double it. secret life. Yes, he does. All right. But I can't say what that double secret life is, though. But he's living one. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm curious to see. Yeah, you got to get that the, book for that. Yeah, I'm curious. And then when they start talking about the trail of hate and love and jealousy, you know, that happens in real life, too. You can be, you know... Um, in a relationship with someone, you know, or whatever, and people around you, if they were used to your attention or used to you hanging with them, or you know, or their or love ain't going right in their life or whatever situation, they they go pour hate on your relationship. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, jealousy is real. Yeah, jealousy. And then especially is real. when you like you got that when you adding like money and power into a situation, like you're you're growing with that person. And you can see that that was, was in this book, you know, like these are two different people who are coming from two different ends of the spectrum, you know, and, and then it's like, all right, now they're together. Like, you know, it's unlikely, but now like, you know, they have a relationship and now it's like, you know, going from there, those are the trials and tribulations of making some things happen. And it, it, it sounds like, you know, it's going to be like a really good book. Now, now where they get, is it working with a website or where, where they can find it? What did I uh, start writing my book at? Well, no, I'm saying, where can they find? Started, yeah, where they can where they can find it, like to pick it up. Okay, they can um get it from Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. It's basically on every online website, and the people I publish with, they're called Author House, and they can also publish the book through Author House. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I published one. Of my, in fact, um, my first book was through Author House. Mm-hmm. All right. How, how did you how did you like that experience dealing with Arthur House? Dealing with Arthur House was good. I just hated the fact I would have went through um, self publishing, but I thought that Arthur House would read through and proofread and all of that in the package, but they did not do that. They just did it as is how I sent it, and that's the only downfall I had. But other than that, they're very great. They um. Gave me my own little bookmarks and postcards and business cards and all of that kind of stuff. They made sure that they let me know I was very picky and all that. But they 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 respected my game and how I wanted things because I let them know when I first was going in through them. Look, if this fake, don't 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 tell me that this is real. If it's fake, because if it's a scam, it's gonna be some problems. I was telling them stuff like that. <laughs> and they were just telling me, you know, assuring me that this is real. Because I was letting them know, look, this is a dream for me. So if this ain't real, don't play with me. Right. So, Fashion. Yeah, I, I, I went through Author House as well, and um, they are definitely legitimate. However, what I the one thing I could say I didn't like was how they rushed me to approve the, the work. Like you said, they didn't give me time. Uh, they didn't do any proofreading, but they just like, they they don't, it's like they're rushing, like, okay, come on, you ready? Time your light. I'm like, wait a, slow, wait a minute. I, let me, yeah. hold on. You know, <laughs> that's kind of how I felt. Like they were just like ready to get the product out there, but there are a lot of different um, um, uh, uh, companies and you don't necessarily have to go back through Offer House for your second book. I, I would recommend, no. yeah, I would recommend trying a different um, self-publisher the next time. I mean, you have with all these self-publishers, you have to kind of like look and see what the pros and cons is. And say, okay, this is my this is my experience with them. Do I want to go through that again? No, let me go find another different one. You know what I'm saying? And let let me see if I can get more profit for each book. Let me see if they're gonna 
give me some extra stuff that I didn't receive for from mm-hmm. Author House. The one thing I will say about Author House is Author House will have your book everywhere. It will have it in um um, as an e-book, and as a regular book, in every outlet, you France, Germany, you're all over the creek freaking world, you you will have it in all those places. Would it be like in different languages, or just like, no, not different languages, but they will have, have it, it in different uh, countries. Yeah, different countries and everywhere. What a, what about a uh, what do they call them? Like the ones with, when you listen to them, or what do they call them? An audio book. An audio book. That's, that's something that you were interested in as well. Well, yeah, if I can get it, anything that my book can be inside or be made on, I'm down for that. I'm down for okay. what else? You know, a lot of people do like audio books, so that is another avenue that you can take um, your book. In fact, I've been thinking about it for my it's, own. It's really cool. Because really people cool. don't oh, always like to read when you're, Yeah, you can, because when you're driving, if you're like extra busy, but you do want to read the book. You can have the book, you can read it, but then also you can be catching up through the audio. Like people mm-hmm. like who say, "Well, I've I seen the film, but I, 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 I like the book." You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and like the characters, and you bring the characters more to life too. But do you use your imagination when you're reading? You know, the the print of it. You know, and but that brings you into it as well because you know what the way she's expressing the storyline and, and things like that. What comes out of the characters? Yeah. So then, you know, audio books is pretty cool too. You know. So what is your family? Um, say, when you first told them that you wanted to write a book, and how supportive do you think they've been since you've written the book? Oh, Lord. <laughs> my mom was ecstatic. My husband, the first beginning, he was just like, well, if you want to write a book, write a book. But the deeper I got into the book, my husband was like, you know, oh, my God, my wife is an authoress. Because I don't call myself an author. I actually call myself an authoress because that's a, um, a woman author. And but um, my family they're very 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 supportive, and by that I mean close close family. I don't mean whole family. I just mean close family. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's good. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So, um, what advice would you give to another author who is thinking about writing a book? Oh, I'm just going to say it straight. Get off your ass and get to writing because a lot of people <laughs> be dreaming, and they just dream and don't do nothing. And see, Cola, I said that this was a dream that was going to come true. It took two years, but I was still fighting, fighting to make it come true because I felt like I'm not going to waste my time and get on Facebook and just write little skits of books for life. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of people doing it. And if I could tell them one thing, I would say, don't do that. Get you a laptop, write your book, and get it published. Because it's deeper than Facebook. Facebook ain't going to do nothing but get you life. And then you need to do a lot of research. I had to do a lot of research. And writing my book, I had to do a lot of research so I can sound like I know what I'm talking about. It may be a something I want to talk about that I know go on in the street that I've never seen before. So I had to do a lot of research also. But don't give up and be your number one fan. I I feel like when I was first writing my book, I was my only fan. I had support, but I was my only fan. I feel like I got fans once the book came out because I'm sure a lot of people felt like, oh, she ain't going to do shit. She's just talking. So I said it once, and I ain't say nothing else about my book. And a lot of time went by, let people sleep on me, and boom, bam, wham, polar out. There it goes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's what's up. Right. So we um, we're going to we always take a little break. We're going to take a quick music break, uh-huh. and we'll be right back. So don't hang up. We're going to come right back so we can find out more about Miss Courtney Harvey, wow. the nice. author of Cola. Cola. Hi, y'all, I'm on break then. <laughs> we'll be right back. Want to move on scripted? All right. <laughs> How it used to be Like when you heard your favorite song You had to get up and move your feet Cause it felt good down in your soul You had to let everybody know That that's the jam y'all don't understand Grab your lady's hand full of clothes and dance Can we go back? So we 
weekend. We're getting ready to hit the spot. I'm looking extra fly. You're looking extra high. down for the long ride Girl, I had a feeling that The way that you touched me never made me feel so alive I'm gonna dive right into your body, no I won't lie Legs in the air, I'm taking you there, I'll run my fingers down your spine Never a day I'm spending away, wanna be with you all the time You're the first thing that I think of when I wake up, baby, and you know how to make love I don't wanna leave your side, I got your back, I know you got mine Look in your eyes as you're staring at mine Give you the ones over and over again tonight I 
see the figures and figure it out you were the one who was right Cause you keep it 100 Yeah, you keep it 100 You got me coming back I want your body on mine You take me to places that You make me feel right Yeah, you've been so real with me, baby I'm head over heels with you daily No, no one could do it like you Not everything's better with you This unexpected kind of love Must be sent from up above Just hold me And don't let go of me, love The figures and figure it out, you were the one who was right. Cause you keep it 100. Yeah, you keep it 100. You look in your eyes, it's just like in your mind. Keep you the ones over and over again tonight. I see the figures and figure it out, you were the one who was right. Cause you keep it 100. Yeah, you keep it 100. Yeah, you keep it 100. Degrees You were so flying, I know have tuned in to another episode of On The Move Unscripted, and we have Courtney Harvey on the line, and she's been talking about her new Stop book. <laughs> What's that, everybody? Uh-huh. She's been talking about her new book, Cola. I thought it would be cool to play some of that, that gangster love type music. That's what we played, 100 by Rochelle oh, yeah. Jazz and Charlie Sanderson. Um yeah, because that's that kind of love, yeah. that keeping it 100 type love, right, that right. love that, you know what I'm saying, no matter what, you my ride or die, you my cat yeah. in the hat, you know what I'm saying, right. we we in it to win it, you, you know, that Bonnie and Clyde type stuff, mm-hmm. you keep man super woman type stuff. Right. Yeah, have you, have you, speaking of Bonnie and Clyde, when you read the book, you will notice that they say they are deeper than uh, Bonnie and Clyde, so they call themselves Cola and Clyde. Okay. okay. They did the body and Oh, okay. snap. Okay. <laughs> they ended the winning. During the um, Great Depression, doing things that would get them killed and in jail. But in this book, when Dice do come clean with Cola about a lot of things that he's got going on, he's going to know that she don't like it, but the way that he answered, when she, when she asked him this one question and he answered it the way he does, that's how she's going to know she's going to keep holding him down, basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, um, have you worked with any, like, book clubs? So I know since we're going through the COVID, have you, have you done any, like, um, like book signings at any bookstores? No, but I'm I'm going to. I'm just really, really, really waiting on coronavirus to kind of calm down soon because it's, I'm fearing for my life about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, be safe, definitely. Mm-hmm. So have you done any live readings from, from home, like Facebook, Instagram, live? Social media, yeah. No, I don't even have an Instagram, but I'm in the process of making one. I just have a Facebook, and I never went live about the book. It's just basically it's around my surrounding area. But when things calm down with the coronavirus, I'm going to be going out of town in places, you know, being known. My goal is to be known, and I know only person can do that for me is me. So, you know, basically I'm – out here on my own, jumping from the mud. I don't know anybody in particular that can put me out there like I'm really trying to be, but I know this right here is a big, big, big deal because I'm nationwide, and let's not forget, my hometown support me, but then you have to remember you also have haters. So for my haters, I just want them to know whether you support me or not, my book going to be known because of my work and what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm gonna make sure they remember me. 
yeah. So right now, you want to use social media as your best friend, and and and, and, and the best way to do that is gro- joining as many of the book club groups that you can. Yeah. Doing some, you know, you can even do some live. You know, once you're comfortable, get you a tripod or something that can hold mm-hmm. your phone. And, and, and you can um, actually, you know, make sure your lighting is nice. Maybe you put some nice little inst- instrumental, lo- low, soft music in the background and, 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 and start to engage your, um, yeah. your, 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 your followers into the life of cola and dice. You uh-huh. know, like maybe just like read, you know, read maybe, uh, uh, pick a chapter or a verse or an area or, you know, or, or, or even something that's not actually written in the book, but, but colorize it and, and, and get some theatrical, um, things like, let's say, you know, I, I'm just saying, for example, like, let's say you was to do a live and you just like, you know what, today I just want to talk about, you know, color and dice and, um, um and, and 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 the running he just had with the police and how Cola had to humble down or whatever whatever you know just make up stuff with your book because you're writing another chapter another book anyway so give them maybe a uh-huh. little something and it's drawing people into the life of Cola and Dice and also drawing into you as a as a author use the internet to your favor right now since you can't go out and do the things that you would normally do right. if there was no Corona everybody is right now and. People who are not going out are in front of the Internet looking for things to look at. So this is the prime time to really push your book via the Internet. Uh-huh. And that's how me and Lynn met. I'm in, like, one or two book clubs, and that's how me and Lynn met through there. And I was via um, informed about you all, which was a good thing. And another thing that we were talking about earlier that I'm – that I wanted to get on is about my neck publisher. Right now, I'm still, like, if I don't find anybody right now, I'm going to publish with Off the House. But one of my biggest, biggest, biggest goals is to be under someone African-American that is really, really, really into urban and street lit things that I'm writing about. So I'm, I can be under a team that I'm understood by. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Oh, right, right, yeah. Really, really say from my mind that when it came down to my book cover with uh, Author House, like it, it got so crazy that the lady that was helping me to find a girl for my book cover, she actually told me to go look on the website and see if I could find somebody for them. You know what I told her? That's your job. You find. <laughs> You and said, I don't know you said, if people felt like I was rude, but I really didn't care because this is my dream, and what what sells is all on me. Their job is to just get some out. My job is to make sure it's how I want it. Mm-hmm. And I don't play no games. This is a business world. If you're a duck, you're going to get plucked. So before I even started mm-hmm. talking to these high Man, people, because I, I know that they know more than me when it comes down to this type of stuff. So I had to do my research so I know what I'm talking about so they'll know I ain't one of the ones to get played over. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, there are, there are other um, um, companies that you can go through other than Author House. You have um, – now, I, I'm i not even going to mention mine yet because I'm not ready to start pushing ATW Media and Printing, but soon I'll be – uh, printing books and, and dealing with right. different authors, but I'm in I'm too uh, in the beginning stages of it, so I'm not going to um, say myself at this point. But there is um, Lulu.com. You can do it through um, Amazon. Amazon also has book publishing that you can go through. Oh, you know um, well. So what I will say to you is research your options before you go back through Author House. That way you'll know when you get ready to write your third book whether or not you want to. Go back through Author House or try someone new. None of my books, and I'm gonna be honest with you, um, none of my books are published through the same person because mm-hmm. I, really? there were things with one. Like when I went through Author House, there were things about them that I did not like at the time, and so and I wanted to see what my other options are. So you don't have to be limited um, to to one particular um, online um, company. And not only that, but know that. Uh, and, and I don't know a lot of if a lot of authors know this, but when you go through these um, book publishers, they own your cover. 
So if you were to decide mm-hmm. that you no longer wanted to be with Author House and you wanted to take your book to another company, that first book, I'm talking about this one, Cola, you would not be able to take the cover. And see, that's a drawback with a lot of the different companies that they don't tell you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Lord. right. Well, that's you know what, if I'm doing I just find me another dope, another dope cover anyway. I mean, but um, I, I have someone that I'm thinking about publishing with. She's a, a famous lady that writes books, and I mentioned her name earlier. I'm already in process of trying to get that done with her, and I'm not so big on just that because because I'm the type of person that don't believe it until I see it or don't announce it until it's here. And I want to just scream my name out loud. Lord knows I do, but I'm not because I got to make sure that it's going to go through the way I do. I want it to. But if it do, Lord have mercy, I'm going to scream and fall out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's like so cool. serious. Well, I I, I want to um, say to you in the book club, in the book club, she had she had people that's actually and and I want to say before I got in the book club and seen one of her work agents working in there for, I had already been calling her because when I say my goal is to be rich and be big, I had started looking it up and I never knew she had her own publishing company. So I called and called. I blow them folks up. I'm talking about for a whole two months straight. And the last time I called, I said, look, y'all, my name is Courtney Harvey, and I'm going to make sure y'all remember me. I've been calling this lady. I don't know how many times I ain't got a phone call yet. She held me in her office. And I tell you, when I hung up, I promise you, an hour later, her uh, someone in the next process, instead of the front biz, front office called me, and I called my, I got off the phone and told my husband, and I called my mama and and all of that. I want to say who it is, but I'm not because, like I said, I'm, not, I, I really believe in being private and and holding things in until it's here because I might say who it is and then boom, it don't happen. I'm back talking to someone else, but I really got my hopes up on this lady. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I I want to commend you because writing a book, I know from experience, it, it takes a lot of um, patience, perseverance, you know, self control. Uh-huh. Because you, you know, we're talking about a, a, a book that might have what you know, thirty two thousand words or sixty four thousand words or a hundred thousand words, depending on how many you know how how, how big the book is. Yeah, and it takes dedication yeah, to really sit there and complete it. Mm-hmm, Cause Cola had well over a uh, uh, well over a hundred thousand words. Yeah, so that takes a lot of dedication and commitment and and perseverance. So congratulations on publishing um, your first book, and I wish you much success on on your next book and your series and your audio books. And if you turn it into a film or play, you know the sky's the limit. Once you write that first book, the sky's the limit. You right. only just continue to grow from there. That's what I'm learning. Just be patient with yourself and enjoy the journey. Don't worry about the little little uh, hiccups that you might experience along the way. Just and enjoy the haters, your journey. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Don't worry about the haters. They're going to be reading it, too. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know what? Most of the haters is just the ones who sitting around because they ain't did nothing. You know, and they mad at you because you're doing something. They want to do something, but they ain't got enough in them to do it. So, you, you know, just right. give them some. Pray for them. Yeah, That's what I say. By example. Pray, pray for them. Be a movie. I'm going to make sure she be a movie, and it's going to be real X-rated. I'm talking about the real stuff. <laughs> y'all, when I think about a movie, I love whole classes like Clear Club, Thin Line Between Love and Hate, Daily, all that old time stuff like that get good to me because of the sex things. Like, movies these days, they make, it ain't relevant like back in the day. Do y'all know what I mean by that? The sex scenes yeah. are just whack. They're just kissing and it goes off. And I mean, I just want my my movie when I do make it. It gonna be some dude. It ain't gonna be nothing whack or looking like it's just downplayed, recorded off somebody's phone. I don't know how I'm gonna make it or how I'm gonna get there, but it gonna get there. Ah, hey, yeah. hey, I, yeah. hey, it, hey, it, 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 yeah, it can be done. I know that um, it can be done. You, I, I did it, so I know it can be done. And 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 it, it just took perseverance yeah, I mean, and being determined. Because I'm gonna be calling and texting you. This ain't our last time talking. I'm gonna be. 
That's what's up. That's what's up. So, yes, yeah, so we have Courtney Harvey on the line today mm-hmm. discussing her new book, Cola. Yeah. And um, it sounds real deep, sounds real, 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 um, you know, juicy, sounds like, right. you know, got some twists and turns in there, you know. She's a new author doing her thing, so everybody go out and support her. Right. You can go to Author House. Um, um, I think the ID is the is the ID for it eight one four two two five on Author House. Ma'am, uh, it looks like there's an ID eight one four two two five dash cola for Author House. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So anyway, go to Author House and look up uh, cola or look up. Uh, um, um, Courtney Harvey, or you can put in her book detail information, 814-225-COLA, or you can go to Amazon.com, right. Barnes & Noble, mm-hmm. Books A Million. Is I'm telling you, she, she, everywhere, idea. anywhere, right. in all places, go ahead and support her. Support, support now, y'all can have black me on authors. Facebook, too. My name on Facebook is Shakey Lachey. S-H-A-K-E-Y space L-A-S-H-A-Y Agnes. And inbox me whatever you want to. I will help you find my book. All right. Yeah. So, what what made you pick that name? Shake your your your, the, your Facebook name. <laughs> Shaky is my nickname ever since I was little. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Well, I wish you any shout outs you want to give out before um we roll on out here. Any shout outs you got? Oh, Lord, shout-out going to be simple as hell. Shout-out to God, myself, my husband, my family, and my friends, and everybody that love me. Awesome, right. awesome. And, and and your last words of wisdom to any authors out there, your last words? Never give up and believe in yourself and don't sleep on your dreams. That's right. If, if nothing else, I think that – um. Open people need to 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 really take that to heart. Like you're always gonna have people tell you what you can't do. It's not gonna be possible. Ain't no way. Right. What makes you think you gonna make it? How? What makes you think you gonna be this that? And you always got them dream killers, dream stiller type mm-hmm. pessimistic people. You got to ignore those people and go after your heart because the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be at the towards the end of life and be like, darn, I wish I had to tried this. Well, darn, I wish I had done that. Do what makes you happy. Yes. Let let the haters uh-huh. let them be where they are. You know. Mm-hmm. You just be you and and and, and have fun. Right. Oh, uh, I got one more thing to say before we get off this thing. Um, to anybody that just really, 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 really have a dream, it's very, very important that you don't sleep on your dream because. Like Ms. Patricia said, you're going to hear people that's negative. You're going to hear people that don't believe in you. You're going to realize that people are dropping during the process and the ones that was there for you in the beginning, they're not. You're going to realize you got family and friends that don't even care about what you got going on because they're not doing it. You, I mean, you're you're gonna have people that want to try and judge you off the writing in your book, but you just have to ignore people, even though. Ignoring people is another big thing. Ignoring people and only believing in yourself and putting it in your mind that God got you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Girl, you better tell them, Courtney. You better tell them. <laughs> yeah, I, I love trying to be a very motivational person because actually what made me want to be an author is, is because I was literally in a place where I felt like I was having a midlife crisis. And by that, I mean, mm. I don't want to be I'm getting on up in age and I can't do anything that makes me feel like, hey, I really did something. And crazy to say, I'm never satisfied with nothing that I do. I graduated high school. I went and um, got my CNA license. I quit that. I like I liked the job, but it just wasn't for me. And I hadn't went back to school for nothing else. And I was just like, man. What am I going to do with my life? And I was only 26, no, 25 at the time, thinking about I'm going to have a midlife crisis, and I don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm. I want to be somebody right. to be able to look back and say, damn, I did that. And even though Cola out, I'm still shocked and I'm just shocked. 
I really, really pushed myself to do this. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, the time I said, fuck this shit, I can name a time that my whole book erased, and I had to start all the way over. I mean, oh, I just did not want to do that. But the all the work was well worth it because when I first found out I was doing my interview with y'all, I did not want to tell nobody because I was like, what if this fake? What, you know, you just really feel like when you never been, you know, done stuff like this, you feel like, man, this is some fake shit. Why I'm the, uh, why are all, all people me? But I'm actually starting to get to the point to where I'm realizing that I did it and I shouldn't be shocked no more, but I still am. Yeah, you, you'll get through that process as you're starting to get more of the things that are people are coming to you and as you come on the shows and you're doing TV shows or you're doing other radio shows and, you, and you're building up your, your, your name or your brand and putting your name out there, you'll, you'll see a difference as it's going. And, and definitely keep on going. Don't doubt yourself because it's definitely there for you. And this book yeah, is going to be a catalyst for that. I want to meet Beyonce. Beyonce and Jay-Z, if I can meet two celebrities right now, no, nah, I say three. I want to meet Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Megan Thee Stallion. All right. <laughs> That's who I want to be. So y'all make sure y'all, y'all can hear me. Look, if, if, if Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Megan Thee Stallion, if y'all can hear me, I love y'all. <laughs> and Ice Cube, too, man. You like Ice Cube, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's my first time being on a, on a worldwide national talk thing, and I'm just excited about that. I know one thing. I, I sure will get them a shout out on the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be played all around the world. Yeah, yeah. it'll be on iHeartRadio yeah, and Spotify, Spotify and yeah. Podbean and Spreaker.com, Blog Talk Radio, Star Music Radio. Yeah. You'll be all over the place. So right. um, we appreciate you for coming on. Oh, yeah. And definitely we want everyone to go out and support this author yes. um, and get her book, Cola. And we wish you much, much success and many, many uh-huh. blessings. All right. All right. Thank y'all. And I shall wish y'all the same. All All righty. Thank you. I want to move on scripture, y'all. Uh-huh. Come get some. Can you feel that music? Can you feel that beat? Can you feel that beat? Can you feel it? Can you feel the music? Can you feel the beat? Yeah. Let the music cruise through your body till it reaches your face. Yeah. When I was a young girl, my mother told me. She said you gotta have faith, baby. You gotta believe. She said when one door closes, another door opens. You gotta have faith, baby. You gotta believe. There's nothing too hard for you If you believe You gotta have faith Let the music cruise through your body till it reaches your feet. When one door closes, another door opens. You gotta have faith, baby. You gotta believe. Listen, y'all. They used to tell me. They said, but 
You gotta have faith. 